Hey, what's up? So you know how there are U.S. presidents, right? Hmm? Alright, good. And you may have also heard how some of them have died during their terms by some douchebag, right? Hmm? Alright, yeah. Well, I'm sure you've heard of the classics. John Wilkes Booth, Lee Harvey Oswald, Fred Figglehorn. These fuckers have their place in hell. But I'm sure you haven't heard of the two that nobody cares about. One of them was already covered by my boy Sam, but since he's dead or something, I'm going to finish what he started. So he covered Charles J. Guiteau, who killed Garfield, but who he didn't mention was who killed William McKinley. That man was Leon Cholgas, which I like to pronounce as... Cholgas. Leon was born on May 5th, 1873 in Alpena, Michigan. I've looked at a few different places, and it's not really certain where he was born. Some say Detroit, some say Alpena, but whatever, it's not really important. Anyway, he was born to a Polish immigrant family with three older brothers along with four younger brothers and two younger sisters. Shit, I'm content with my one brother. Imagine the cleanup alone with ten carpet goblins. God damn. Anyway, they left Poland because his dad was working hard labor in factories, making less than one dollar a day. So they moved to the land of burgers in search of, you guessed it, Money and burgers. He acquired a farm in a village in Presque Isle County, Michigan, where he tried to get big brain. Leon only had five years of schooling in his life. He was a huge nerd. He read outside of school and was considered a genius in his family. He was the shy, quiet kid in the corner who was always reading, so the kids didn't like him too much. The school and parents were like, yeah, this dude is like, way too smart to be here. Hey, how about you go over to that school right over there? So then he decided instead of school, he's going to make his family some money with that big old brain of his. Except his mom. His mom died. So then they moved to Natrona in Pennsylvania, where Mr. Man gets his first job, where he used that big brain of his to land him the wealthy job of... Glass Factory. So he hung out there for a bit, started work at a wire mill in Cleveland, and since his brain was just too big and lumpy, the wire mill decided to cut the early wages. That made everyone piss, start a strike, and got Leon fired and blacklisted. Got it? Swank. So then he got his job back in 1894 under the false identity of Fred C. Neiman. Incidentally, Neiman is a Polish-German surname that means nobody. That incident left a pretty good mark on his psyche, fucking him up a bit, but eh, that won't bite us in the ass later. He became an anarchist socialist learning the ideas from Radical Sila Club. So then he figured rich people get rich because they mooch off of poor guys like, Hey homeless dude, could I have $700 that you clearly have so I can swoop up my new three-wheeled car designed by Da Vinci himself? Oh yeah, man, here's $800 just because you're so sweet, and I clearly have all of this that I made from working at the anal bead toothpaste factory because Toothy's been buying out all the stock we got. Oh, thanks, bro. I'm not gonna pay you back at all. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking eBay! Then he tried to join many different anarchist groups, but they avoided him completely, mainly because he was a low-life fourth grade dropout. After this, he turned to God and was like, Hey, wanna help out? Well, fine. Guess you're not real. And fuck this place. Immediately after, he started to have nervous breakdowns. His father bought 55 acres of land in Ohio, and back to Daddy Leon went. He did jack shice there, not doing any chores or farm work. He just studied anarchy and read all the time. Then he read about when King Umberto I of Italy was killed in 1900 by an anarchist. Leon was like, Wow. And was mesmerized by anarchy even more. Then he moved to Buffalo for a bit, trying to get rich. Didn't work in the slightest, but he did meet this one chick known as Emma Goldman, who was giving some kind of anarchy rules, government drool speech. He was so impressed, he became the world's first simp, and asked her what books he must read in order to obtain her level of pure big brain. He met her again coincidentally in Chicago, going under his fake name, and simped even harder. He wanted to meet her friends to take him with her, but she was going to Boston after that, and he thought there was, quote, no time for that. Within a short period, he revealed that his name was not Neiman, but Leon Kazalgazes. This, along with his awkward behavior and his tendency to ask blunt questions about their secret societies, made Emma suspicious about his intentions. She realized his simpage, then straight up posted a warning about him in Free Society, which is the newspaper that they had back then. Now we get to the part that you all came here to listen to for some reason. The death of our president. So in 1901, Leon returned to Buffalo yet again in a saloon where he heard that the president was going to be at the Pan-American Exposition on September 5th and 6th. Leon, with his Robin Hood-like mind, was like, Ooh, a rich guy. And decided then and there that he was going to kill him. So on September 2nd, he bought a safety automatic revolver, which the website was kind enough to give a serial number for. Serial number 463344. Forget this, $4.50, which, holy shit, I need to time travel to 1900 to buy a shit ton of guns for that price. 
Probably really shit quality, but hey, 450, right? Anyway, on September 5th, the president gave a speech on tariffs and foreign trade at the exposition. Although Leon had gone there with the revolver, he soon realized that he would never be able to get close enough to the president. So he was like, well, fuck it, I want to do it tomorrow anyway. And went home. The next day, the president was supposed to meet the public for 10 minutes at the Temple of Music. Leon had his gun under a handkerchief, and McKinley was going through the queue, shaking hands with all of them, and Mr. Man gets up there, shakes his hand, looks him dead in the eye, and shoots him in the abdomen and stomach, seriously wounding him. He fell back and was all like... <laughs> then the crowd all fucking jumped on Leon and beat the shit out of him. Police had to fight the crowd a bit to get him into custody and to stop them from, you know, killing him. Which I don't really see a point in, because they're going to kill him anyway, so it, what, what was the point of that? Anyway, McKinley died eight days later from his injuries, which sounds like hell, but... Leon's trial was just insane in every way. He wouldn't cooperate with his own defense team, didn't say anything in his defense, and said that he did not think it was right that one man should have so much service and another man would have none. He also told interrogation that he did it because he thought it was his duty. His lawyer at one point was just like, Fuck it. The dude's insane. Look at him. Does that look like the face of a good boy to you? No. That's what I thought. The jury also said that no sane dude would be able to shoot the president in such an enclosed space. But then again, he knew the consequences of his actions, so he couldn't be. Then it took only an hour for all of the jurors to be like, Yeah, dude's guilty. Fucking kill him on the 26th. And so they did. Also, it's worth mentioning that the entire time they did this, he sat still, not moving, showing no emotion. I told you he was the quiet kid. At his execution, he was given three jolts in the electric chair, and his last words were, I'm not sorry for my crime. I'm sorry I could not see my father. His family wanted to give him a proper burial, but the authorities refused because of the mob violence, so the conversation went something like this. Hey, give us our dude back, you dicks! Here's our blood and we fucking want it! No, bro. People are pissed. We're all gonna die, so shut the fuck up and deal with it. Well, give me the dead corpse anyway, you assholes! No. Yes! No, fuck off. Yes! Fine, since you're being such a bitch about it, how about he's gonna be buried right here in this prison and dump sulfuric acid on top of it? How do you like that? Huh? Huh? Eh, that'll do. I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but you get the idea. So the lesson here is... Getting what you want can only be achieved if it's done in front of hundreds of people, but if it involves murder, they're gonna come after you for it. And dump literal fucking acid on your corpse. Anyway, that's all for this one. I'm Kronkosfer, and thanks for watching. <laughs>